Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kiara Dice. If you haven't already, please do subscribe, join the tribe, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Don't forget about TikTok. So I have a gripe, <laughs> a big one, like a really big one. And this is something I have noticed in consuming media recently in the last couple of years. And it's, it's just like, I have to vent about it, rant about it. And yeah, here we are. So basically, for some reason, not well, 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 reasons we're gonna talk about, Hollywood has been pandering to China or Chinese audiences or Mandarin speaking people. And it just doesn't make much sense. Basically, what I'm trying to say is in certain films and television, they have been having people who don't speak any Chinese try to speak Chinese. I've even seen gibberish. Okay, I'm gonna give you two examples, right? One is from Insecure. So if you've never seen the show Insecure, it comes on HBO. It's started by, um, it's written and produced by Issa Rae. We love Issa Rae. She just got married. Congratulations, girl. This is not like a read on her. This is just, just me ob observing. So, in the show, Insecure, it follows two black women living in Los Angeles, blah, 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 blah. The relationships work, doo, 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 doo. Season three or four, she starts dating a Chinese American man who is played by an actor who is actually Chinese Australian. They call him Asian Bay <laughs> in the show, Asian Bay. Um, anyway, so he, in real life, doesn't speak Chinese, but in the show, they have him meet his older brother, who is also Chinese American, and um, the, 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 the girl Molly, his girlfriend, meets them, and they like speak Chinese together, the older brother and him, and when you hear it, if you speak Chinese, it just sounds so awkward and it doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> bring it in. Thank you, girl. Wow. You're a little bit of Russell Brand. You're like Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. So, this is the Molly. Post production, me. Um, yeah, it just doesn't sound right. Hey, Gugu. Ni Bushong Russell Brand. Ni Jen Tofala. Ni Bushong Mark Zuckerberg. It don't sound right. It's just white. Just. Have them speak English because that's what it sounds like anyway. It doesn't sound like Chinese, but okay. Okay. Behind the scenes, they had to like get a speech coach and a Mandarin coach and, and the Australian guy, uh, the actor, I can't remember. I don't know his name. Let me, y'all, let me, let me do my research real quick. Let me look, let me look up his name. Um, Never grew up speaking Mandarin, doesn't speak very much Chinese. I'm sure his, like, his older family does, but like, which, okay, but, uh, let me see. Insecure Asian actor. And here, here he is, Alexander Hodge. And so in real life, he doesn't speak any Chinese. And in this show, he doesn't really speak any Chinese because it just sounds so awkward. And so I'm not trying to roast anyone's Chinese, like your Chinese doesn't have to be perfect, but it just makes no sense. And he, the actor Alex College was like, oh, I worked really hard to get my Chinese to a point where it can be intelligible. Um, but that's not my point. My point is why even have them speak Chinese when they're playing to Chinese Americans because Representation is about showing that not all Chinese people who are ethnically Chinese like have to speak Chinese. You know what I mean? Like there, so there's a lot of people who grew up in the United States. Their families, their ancestors, or not, not uh, ancestors always sound so old. I'm talking about like like they're probably third or fourth generation American, and they just don't speak any Chinese. You know, maybe they know like a little bit here and there, but like why would two brothers? who grew up in the United States, who speak perfect English, speak awkward Chinese with each other. It just doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't do anything for the plot, 
there's no mention of why they're speaking Chinese together. I just don't get it. And then like hearing them speak, it sounds so like if I spoke to my brother in like broken Spanish or something. Hola, como estas? Bien y tu? Hombre? Like that. It's, it, it, and I'm really not trying to like be sedity about it. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. Why have them speak Chinese when they don't? And you can easily have an Asian character or Chinese American character who is just American and just doesn't even have to speak the Chinese, especially if it, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, uh, I was just like, why? For why? For who? So Issa Rae, I'm, that, that's, that's what I have to say to you. Okay, girl, congratulations on the wedding in the South of France, but I'm just saying like, I just don't understand why, why we had to do that, why we had to go there. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't, okay? And so that's that's number one. And I can kind of forgive this because there seems like there was some thought put into it. Maybe they wanted to like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm trying, I'm, 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 I'm reaching. I'm reaching for something to grab onto, but there's not much there. But I will say maybe they wanted to like show that Chinese is a language that exists and some people speak it and some people don't. And I, I don't know. Okay, sure. The next one I want to talk about. No, this one is just downright insulting. It is absolutely a crime against the Mandarin language and the Chinese culture altogether. And this whole show was absolutely terrible from start to finish. Everybody roasted the show um, talking about how terrible the fashion was, how stupid the plot was, and no one really noticed this small detail, but I did because I am clearly the Mandarin language police and I am going to not on my watch. So I'm watching this show on Netflix called Emily in Paris and I'm like, all right, so I watched it. Okay, so plot, I wanna go over the plot, I guess. Um, you got Emily, an American girl from Chicago, who's like a little, I don't know, young and blah, blah, blah. Gets a job opportunity at a marketing agency in Paris, goes to Paris and it's like, oh, we gotta Americanize everything. Oh my God, America, the beautiful, the great, oh my gosh. America, F yeah. And, um, and like the whole season, she's just, oh, you guys should do it the American way. And the French people were like, oh, you finally helped this poor French people. We all, the Americans, you know, the Americans do everything so right, you know. It was, it was really like, it was, it was cringy like that. So anyway, the first couple episodes, she goes to a park and meets a Chinese girl living in France, living in Paris, who's been there a long time. And she's like her, French culture guru. Oh, I'm here to teach you about how French is France and French culture and da, da 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 So when they first meet in the park, she turns out she's a nanny for um, some French children. And her backstory is that she's Chinese and tried to become like a, I don't know, like a pop idol or was on some kind of like X Factor China edition game show singing competition and lost and whatever moved to Paris. I, I, I don't know. And, and also, she's supposed to be a fool or die. Like, that's another thing. Fool or die. It's like, um, it's, it's the second generation rich in Chinese. So basically, like, you can't have a Chinese story without there being a fool or die. Like, God forbid there's any, you know, it's like, that's kind of how Western media has portrayed Chinese people. Like, Everyone who comes from China is going to be super rich. And so anyway, so she's a four guy. And she's in Paris being a nanny or an au pair. And then in the park, she says to the um, the kids, she yells at the kids, like, come here or something. But she says something in complete gibberish. It is not Chinese. It is not Mandarin. It is, it was like... It was just saying, blah, 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 blah. What is she oh saying? God. Hold on, hold on. I know what's gonna happen next. Laurent! Dai Zainar! Blah, blah, blah! Dai Chow! What? Little shit. 
Girl, I can't Netflix. What? Unintelligible. It was just total gibberish. Anyway, on this Reddit post, it says like terribly Chinese pronunciations by Mindy. Shout out to any Mandarin speakers. Anyone else cringe hard when Mindy is speaking Mandarin Chinese? Sounds like someone reading directly from Google Translate. To others, it sounds like any Asian of all Asia. Casting a Korean to speak Chinese, she could at least work on the pronunciation. And um, it says she's an American actress who grew up in Michigan. I feel like they could have just hired a Chinese actress, but Hollywood is so whitewashed. Even when you get different ethnicities, there's always something. Like they don't know the language they're supposed to be speaking. So that's what this whole video is about. Like the idea of like, representation being completely inauthentic. It just doesn't make sense. Like the first example in Insecure, they're speaking Chinese together. And it's like in a real situation like that, two brothers who grew up in the United States speaking English would never speak Chinese to each other. For what? Especially if it's like broken. Like, you know how language is literally supposed to be a means of communication. And like, let's just say two people speak two of the same languages, we're gonna speak the language that is easiest for us to communicate in. And so watching Insecure, it just, it came off as awkward, it came off as contrived and just like unnecessary and like bad, not good, cringy. And then Emily in Paris, like it was, that one was to me insulting. Like she doesn't even say anything that is coherent. You know, it just sounded like if you wanted me to speak French and I just be like, oh, okay, well, let me just, <laughs> let me be all for sure. Reminds me of this, this, um, uh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share it here. Like <laughs> this skit. You're here and my translator hasn't turned up. <laughs> I need to find someone who can translate into seven different languages. Well, I can do that. Financial year 2005. 2006. Helen. Hurdy gurdy gurdy. Hurdy gurdy gurdy gurdy. Ah, bun bun bun. It doesn't even make sense. But anyway, I'm I'm done with the rant. I'm I'm good. I'm good. Um, I, I'm just it's just something I really wanted to talk about real quick. So yeah, comment below and tell me what you guys think about this whole thing. I'm sure there are more examples. If you guys got other examples, let me know. But uh, I do judge people's Mandarin a lot when I hear Mandarin being spoken in different. TV shows. Alright, I'm done with this video. Okay, love y'all. Thank you for watching. Bye.